Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day six, and today's node is the Material Linker node. So I have this file over here. At the stage level, I have this setup. It's just a bunch of lights and a basic scene once again. And before we go ahead and actually do anything with this, let's just switch to our Solaris desktop. Okay. So this is what we have. If I just switch on the Karma XPU render, you'll see that there's just these gray objects with a few lights set up on the side. Now we want to add materials to this. There are a bunch of ways that we can add materials. The usual would be a material library where you can build your own materials. However, we also have access to the material linker. Now the material linker node works similarly to the way that the layout node works in that it reads from a database. So in this situation, it's reading in a bunch of these materials. This is by default. This is what you should see if you have the catalog tab selected. You may be on rules, just switch to catalog. Now, if we go ahead and extend our geometry tree and extend our scene, you'll see that we have all of our geometries over there. The way that we can use this is that we can drag materials over to the left side over here, and then from there, drag them over to the right side to assign them to the various geometries. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll drag over this car metallic paint, and you'll see that it adds this materials. It also adds the metallic paint over there. You can drag over ceramic blue. We'll do leather blue. We'll take blue cotton, cotton cream, and some metallics. So let's grab the metal bronze and let's assign them to our geometry. So all you do from here is just drag them over to the geometry that you want to assign to. So if I want to assign, let's just say this cotton surface cream to the floor, I grab it over here, click and drag it over to floor. You can see that it highlights it in our viewport. Click over there to assign it. Now, how do we know where it is assigned? If we go over here to take a look at our rules, you can see that when we have the scene selected, it shows everything that has a material assigned. So let's also assign some materials to these other objects over here. Metallic paint, we can put on our sphere. Ceramic blue to our tall platform. Cotton blue to our short platform. And then metal bronze to our tube platform. Now, if you click on the scene over here, you can see all of the geometries beneath it and what materials they have assigned to them. As you can see, the floor has the cotton surface, the sphere has the car paint metallic, and so on. And we can very easily remove materials if we just click on the little cross in the corner over here. So perhaps we're not happy with this metal bronze, remove bronze, go over to the catalog, choose something else. So I'll grab a nickel, click on nickel, and then drag it over to the tube platform, just like that. And if you just deselect this right side, so just click away, you can actually see what's assigned to each material if you click on each one. So if we have, say, this cotton surface assigned to two geometries, it'll show up here. So let's just do that by assigning it to our background, right? So now we have two geometries using the same material, so it shows up over here. So let's just say that one of these materials in the scene we don't really like. What we can do is we can actually adjust the material. So we can right click on one of them. So let's just go ahead and adjust our cotton surface cream over here. Now you can see that it says edit material properties or edit material network. Editing material properties is less intuitive in my opinion, because you're changing things based on a bunch of parameters. Whereas if you say edit material network, it'll create this edit material node for you over here. And from here you can say load. And if you dive inside, you actually have access to the node itself. And then from here, you can make changes to things like the color. So if I want to change the color of this cotton, we can do that from here. So all you have to do is enable whichever thing you'd like to adjust, for example, bump scale, and then give it some value, right? And so now we have that cotton having a bit of a bump map to it, and our scene now has materials. So I just want to show you one other thing that's really cool about this. So I'm going to delete the material linker and the material edit that we had over there. What I'm going to do now is just place a new material linker, plug it in as we had before, go to the catalog, but this time I'm going to click on this cog, and just say open AMD Material X library. What you can do is you can now add a new folder somewhere. So let's just call this AMD saved materials, accept, accept. And what it'll do is it'll create a location on disk to actually save a bunch of these materials too. These materials are all created by AMD and there are a lot of materials that we can use. I find that the best way to use it is to switch it to tree view so that we can see the different types of materials that exist. If you're looking for a basic material, it'll be under base. And then you have all of these more specific categories. So let's go ahead and actually use one. So let's go ahead and grab some interior flooring of some sort, perhaps this dark walnut mosaic. And when you click and drag it over, you'll see that it lags for a moment. 
And that's only because it has to actually download this material and save it to disk, right? So every time you're using a new material, it's gonna have to save it to disk. But once it's saved it to disk, anytime you use it after that, it won't have to load, right? So now we can use it, no problem. So let's go ahead and just apply it to our ground. So you click and drag it over to floor. And just like that, we have it applied to the floor. Now do keep in mind that this does have UVs and if you don't have UVs, then these textures won't appear correctly. So do ensure that you have your UVs correctly set up on all of your geometry so that when you bring these in, the textures are applied correctly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag a bunch of these over and just apply them and set up the scene. So that is how we use the material linker node inside of LOPS. Do keep in mind that after our material linker, these materials are kept in our scene graph tree. So we can still use things like a material assign. So assign material over here. So that means that we can drag a primitive up there and a material and assign that material to that primitive. So I hope this helped you understand the material linker node. I'll be back tomorrow with the comma material builder. So thank you for watching. Bye.